Hey guys, welcome back to No Agenda Tutorials. In the last one, we covered path variables and we went as far as having multiple of them. Now, in this one, we'll be covering HTTP status codes and HTTP methods in Express. So far, we'll be using get method, which is default with all browsers. So every time you type a URL in there, your browser will do a HTTP get on that URL. Now, as we covered previously in the web thing, uh, there is four, so get, put, post, delete. Um, get is usually for getting information, put is usually for updating information, post is usually for creating information, and delete, you guessed it, is for deleting information. You don't necessarily have to follow them, so the program won't actually stop you. So if you coded um, get to for something to delete, then it won't really physically stop you. It won't say, no, you can't do this, and then it won't shut itself down. Um, but it's a good practice to follow them because they are named like that for a reason to, for, to make it easy for people to maintain the piece of code that hasn't developed and make sure that people don't accidentally do anything wrong because if your get deleted something then if the general knowledge is that the get is for getting information then someone will try to get information and, and then actually delete that information so it's a bit of a, um, yeah, could be a, could be a minefield in that case if you choose to make uh, mix them up. But the objective of this tutorial is for us to create a new um, a API with the uh, with post. So what we'll do is we'll create a array which is going to hold the ice creams that the person likes uh, along with their name and the get one will get that uh, array and will present information and the, uh, the post one will um, allow them to add their choices in there. Uh, now, this method is a little bit more complicated, but, but just bear with me while I do this. So I'm going to replace get with post, and it's the, everything's going to remain the same. But I need to create that array first, so var um, um, uh, ooh, database, so this is the fake database, yeah? And then we're going to say... Uh, whenever this is posted, we're going to capture the choice and name, and then we're going to say uh, database dot push, and then we're going to create a new object um, uh, choice choice name name, and then just return that back. That's fine. We don't care. I don't think do we? Um, so now. If I save this and restart my Express server, and if I go back here and refresh this, this won't work because even though the URL is, is exactly the same, the Express is expecting a post method to be invoked on this URL and not a get. And, and as I mentioned before, browser will always um, do a get. So to remedy this, because this makes it testing difficult, um, there's, there are several tools. One of them is Postman. I quite like Postman because it runs on Chrome and it's a Chrome extension, I guess, or an app, whatever you call it these days. It allows you to do whatever you want, basically, with uh, API testing. So, you know, you, you can choose anything that you want. Um, so, you know, when I said there's four mains, there's a lot more, but those are the four primary ones. So, uh, yeah, don't worry. Don't be like, oh my god, this guy said four and there are like a million of them in this list. Yeah, don't worry about those. Uh, no, at least for now. Um, right, so we've got HTTP localhost, and we're going to change this URL to be I like, and then we're going to uh, mango, and then my name, Manthan. So I like mango, so I am Manthan, and I like mango. So that's it, that's it, and we're going to disable the headers. Uh, never mind these, these are just local tests. Even if you steal my API key, it won't, have, it won't make any difference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Um, we, didn't, we don't need any headers, so I'll just delete these. Um, Boom, 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 done. Uh, we don't need any authorization or anything. It's just a post URL to this, and we should get back. Um, a, hey, Manthan, I like Mango, too. Uh, boom, right. So now, um, now this might seem the same thing, and you might, and you probably like. Well, this made no difference. Only it made testing harder for me. But no, what we did this time is we did database push. So we said capture the params and then save them in my database, which is a fake database, so it's only an in-memory database. Uh, but we can't view this information yet, because, like, you know, you can't. How are you going to view that information? 
So to, to do that, we're going to create a new API, which is going to be a get API. So we're going to say router.get. Uh, URL can be anything, so uh, we'll just say likes or something. And then we're going to create a function uh, rec res as usual. And in this case, we're going to return back that array. So we're going to say uh, res.send database. And uh, that's it. Save that. Restart Express. And if I now go here and say likes, we get empty array because currently nothing is stored in the database. But now if I go back here and send this again, and then if I switch back to the browser, refresh it, I get my first choice, which is Mango and Mantha. If I go back and then add another one, so say vanilla, and then I don't know, a random name, so John send, and then go back here, refresh, I get another one now, vanilla John, because we're pushing items to the database as they come in the post. And then whenever get to likes is invoked, we then send the database back. So this was a very, I guess, cool example of this, uh, of having data stored somewhere and then retrieving in, uh, returning that data back to the client. Using databases is similar to this, but not quite the same, because databases are a lot more um, complex than just an array that's here, and then you're just returning the whole array back without any consideration about user permissions and stuff. Because imagine if this array held your users, you wouldn't want to send your entire user database to the person, right? So, um, yeah, to the to any user, right? Um, yes, we're gonna now do um, status codes. Now, we get back 200 every time, right? We get back 200. As you can see, status 200, okay. But sometimes it's not okay to be okay, right? Sometimes if you, when we're printing an API, it's not the right thing. So 200 okay is not right uh, code because some criteria is not match. So say for instance, we only want to um, allow ice cream choices of ice cream choice names whose length is less than seven characters, or we only want to allow ice cream choices um, called vanilla, and or we only want to allow people by certain name to be able to post it. Or like that. Just a very trivial criteria, right? So if I say here, so I can make that criteria. I can say if name name equals Mountain, then only allow this. Yeah. Then make that a bit nicer. So if your name is Manthan, then do this else. Well, else what? Well, else don't turn anything, right? And don't do anything, right? So if the name is Manthan, then store it to the database, create the response object, and send the response object. Else, just send empty, send nothing, right? And kind of, well, yeah, so that, that's kind of what we want right now. So save that, restart the server. Go back to here, and now if we send this. Then it sends 200 back, but the user has no clue why the user hasn't returned, hasn't got any data back. That's not a very good thing because if you have people using your API, then that's not a very good sign of a, a nicely written API. So what you want to do is you want to return a status code back, along with not sending anything. We also want to return a status code which says something's not right. There are various status codes that are available on the web that you can find. So if you go on here and just look for Wikipedia um, status codes, there we go, it's a list of HTTP status codes. Scroll down and there's like literally tons of them. So there's like 200 status codes, 300 ones, uh, 400 which are the client errors, 500 other server errors and that kind of stuff. Um, so in our case, this is a client error because we're expecting the client. Does it there's a certain expectation that we that we have set for the client, and the client hasn't met that expectation. And the expectation being that their name is Mountain. This is again not probably the right um, practical example, but more practical example would be something like uh, this is of of five characters and name is of six characters, that kind of stuff. But um, for simplicity, let's just do this. Now, 
it's just sending blank. The way you send status is you do send status, and then you say uh, 400. Oh, sorry, uh, status dot send. Um, yeah. So if I do uh, so res dot status dot uh, status 400 dot send. Save that. Go back here. Hit start. Uh, send and now I get a status called 400 and postman being a nice client explains to me why what 400 means which is a bad request in this case but if I now say mountain let's say send I get 200 okay so you can those various statistics that you can use 400 and 404 are my favorites so 400 basically means that you have made a client error 404 means that you have that the server didn't find the object that the user was looking for. And then the other ones that I use quite frequently are 401 and 403. 401 being unauthorized and 403 being forbidden. So you are not allowed to do this. Like you say, in this case, this 400 can quite easily be 401, saying you're not authorized to access or to be able to push to this unless your name is Malcolm. So save that, start it again, and then just go here and then say that. So that works. But if I do John, 401 unauthorized. Uh, one more quick thing. Um, if the database is empty, then we don't want to send empty database, we want to send 404. So let's implement that quickly. Which is res.status and this is status uh, 404.send. Uh, and that is if if database equals empty or database actually equals zero. This is probably a much cleaner way of doing it. Uh, so if it's that, then that and else so we've just said if the length of database is zero so which means if my database hasn't got anything then send 404 else send the database save that restart application and postman send as John we still get unauthorized so that code is not broken yet type manthan um, we still get 401. Oh, yeah, because M is lowercase. Um, send that. Uh, hey, man, I like vanilla too. Uh, yeah. Uh, add another one, say, for instance, mango. Uh, mango 2, and then go back here. Do this, likes, vanilla, right? That Because it contains data. Now, if you restart the server, the data is just blank at this point. And just go over here, likes, and change that to get. Now we get 404 not found. But if I went back and added this, and then went back to likes again, which is a get request again, then I get data back. It's not 404 anymore because it contains data. Length is not equal to zero. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. It's been a pleasure. Um, in the next one, we'll do a little bit more cool stuff. So see you guys then. Take care. Peace.